Hey folks, this is me Saurabh here and I'm going to showcase to you a sublime extension for ASP.NET Next. So one of our goals with ASP.NET Next was to allow developers to use any editor or tools that they like to and incorporate it in their workflow however they choose to. And you've seen what we have for you in store in Visual Studio 2014. And let me go ahead and show you a different developer story for a developer using Sublime Text 3. So to follow along with this guide, you probably want to grab the shortened URL and go ahead and open it in your browser. Let me give you a second to copy that. And uh, this is what you're going to get when you pull it up in your browser. It's going to take you to our GitHub repository. And uh, we have instructions for you to follow along on both Mac and Windows. So I've already gone ahead and installed it. You guys can pause the video, go ahead, install it and catch up with me. We also have a getting started guide and I'll be walking you through that. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we want to do is grab some sample code from the ASP.NET vNext home. So I'm going to clone the git repository at ASP.NET home. So for the purpose of this demo, I've created a demo directory. I'm going to go in there and clone this repository. Let's give it a second. Cool, it's done. I'm going to navigate and I'm going to open up one of the samples. It's called Hello MVC. You folks can follow along. And I'm going to pull this up in Sublime. So you can see this is an MVC project. I got a controller, model, and a few views in here. Let me go ahead and pull up the project.json file. So now you can see this project has some dependencies like ASP.NET Diagnostics, Hosting, Server, Web Listener. So the first thing you probably want to do is resolve these dependencies. So for that, I'm going to press Command Shift P to pull up the palette in Sublime. And I can start by typing run k commands. And uh, you see this option show up in the palette. When I hit enter, I get a few more options to pick from. And since I wanted to restore the packages, I'm going to go ahead and pick kpm restore. Now kpm restore just opened up a new terminal window and kicked off a restore and you can see all these packages are already cached on my machine but if they're not cached on your machine your computer is going to hit my get or new get and resolve all these packages and we can see it's done installing all these packages so now we can proceed to the next step. So after all your dependencies have been resolved the first thing you'd like to do is verify and see if your project actually builds so let's explore the workflow inside of sublime so if i press command b or f7 i kick off a build inside sublime and you can see it built here and here's the output of my build and i have no errors so let's actually look at the workflow if i did have some errors so i'm going to go ahead and introduce some simple errors i'm going to take a parentheses out from here and i'm going to take a semicolon out of startup and uh, let me go ahead and trigger off another build and you can see it tries to build again and nice we see we have two errors now if I press function f4 it takes me to the error you see there's a semicolon missing in startup.cs cool I uh, insert the semicolon save let me go to the next error and again you see it took me to the line in the column all I had to do was hit f4 and I can insert the parentheses Shift F4 actually takes me to the previous error, just in case I want to see. And you can also click on the errors here in the output window. So now that I have fixed the errors, I'm going to save and kick off another build. And hopefully everything works. And yes, it built without any errors. Okay. For this part of my demo, I've actually switched to Windows. And I'm going to demonstrate the use of the kweb command. It's currently not supported in Mac, but we should have it working shortly. So in Windows, I'm going to go ahead and press Control Shift P to bring up my palette. And as usual, I'm going to type in run k commands. And this time, I'm going to select kweb. And now we have a PowerShell window that pops up and actually spawns up a server. And if you were using a Mac, it would launch a terminal window. And let's actually see what it did. So launch the PowerShell window to this URL. So let's actually open up our browser and navigate to that URL. And there you go. We have our site running.
So another feature I wanted to introduce you folks to was JSON schema validation. So right now I have my project.json open and it's formed correctly. But let me go ahead and introduce something that does not belong there. So let me add an attribute foo and give it the value bar. And uh, let me save it and pull up my command palette and say validate JSON schema. And if you observe where my cursor is in the bottom left, you'll see it says JSON schema validation failed. So we're working on a better way to present it to you, but for now it does show you if it does validate or not. Let me go ahead and remove the erroneous attribute. Save this file and try to validate the JSON schema again. And it did successfully validate, so that's good. And it actually pulls the latest schema from schemastore.org. So it's always up to date.